Okay, so I've been fiddling around with this a little bit uh, prior to this, but um, we're doing what we're doing today is we're going to be reflaring the ends of these brake lines because I think that they just need to be redone. So what I did was I took this brake line. Make sure that you can see what I'm pointing at. This brake line here, which goes to the front part of the master cylinder. Um, uh, I believe this is the... Um, I don't know which one that is. Anyway, this one goes straight out here. So this bottom one is the front brake. So this must be the other. Yeah, this is, this is the, um, the passenger side. So I cut this off using... So basically I took this small, like a little tiny pipe cutter, which if you've never used one of these things, you just stick the end, the pipe through there that you're trying to cut. There's these two little rollers inside and a cutting cutting blade. And then you spin it around there and you tighten it, you spin it around, you tighten it, you spin it around and you tighten it. And eventually it cuts through. And as you can see here, uh, it's just got a nice cut end. Uh, I took off this which I guarantee you, uh, I'm probably just gonna put that right back on right now, just to make sure that I don't forget to do that after I reflare it. Um, and then I'll show you kind of like what the flaring tool is and how that works. Okay, so if you guys have never seen flaring tool, uh, just bought this one as an Amazon special. Uh, basically, um, there's uh, two different types uh, flaring tools. This is called a bubble flare, which is the type of uh, flare that um, actually I just cut the piece off. So let me go, let me let me show you what that is. Hold on. All right. Well, never mind. Um, I lost the piece. Uh, it, it was just a little cut off piece of the uh, flange. So I'm going to cut another one, not lose this one and then I can show you how this whole thing works. But essentially, uh, this is the pipe cutter. This little guy just, you you just put it on there, you tighten it, you spin it around a few times, you tighten it again. Uh, this one's pretty nice, it's a rigid, um, uh, but it's like the close quarters one, because otherwise, you know, you'd have to take all these things off and that'd be a big pain. I mean, a bigger pain than, you know, having to re-bubble re flange the brake lines because they don't, they leak all of the brake fluid out all over the inside of your engine bay. So, anyway, keep spinning, tightening, and you can feel it when it goes, when it really goes through. Well, at least I knew where that one went. So anyway, uh, this, that is the type of flange that we're trying to recreate, which I believe is the bubble flange. Um, and you can see that when you cut it, it basically just cuts a flat, it's just a flat edge, the hole in it, uh, with the hole. And then uh, you wanna, uh, I'll show you how the flange the flanging tool thing works. Okay, so the, the flange, there's a couple, like I said, there's a couple different types of flanging tools. This one's called a bubble flange. Um, it's just a different style. It comes out, um, get this off here. Um, it comes off uh, it yeah, um, comes out looking like that. So it's it's basically um, a uh, it's just a different profile. So hopefully I got the right one because you know 50-50 chance. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to try to recreate this flange on this side using this tool just to see if I got it right. Um, the kit comes with essentially here's the here's the thing. So you have this little like a press and a little block. And the press has different size things. So this one is a 10 millimeter, uh, I think this is ID 10 millimeter. The one for 
these is a 4.75 millimeter. So this, you know, essentially goes, the pin goes inside here and then the, the, there's a divot, like a divot inside and that presses the, presses the metal of the brake line out to make this shape. Hopefully. That's what we're counting on. So anyway, this block, you see that there's 4.75, 6 millimeter, uh, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter. You put the line in like that and clamp it down where you want it to be. I don't think. Yeah, there's a very small um, there's a very small um, uh, chamfer on the inside. So you basically clamp this down. This is gonna be kind of a pain to do when you're in the in the car in the bay there, but we're gonna give it a shot. And then this block. goes over top like this and then you just line the whole of the brake line up with the pin in the middle of the die. Forget your glasses so you can't see anything. Um, this is a pretty it's a pretty tight fit. Um, just you know it's meant to be. So then you drive this down, and I think what you do is you just clamp it down, pull this, pull this back out, release the clamp. And that didn't do anything. It pressed it through the... Hmm. Alright, well, let me keep practicing and I'll get back to you. Alright, figured it out. Had to do a couple of different tries. So there's what I came up with. Wait. Yes, that's mine. The one I did. And there is the one that is the factory one, which is smaller and kind of worn down. So the the key is um, what I was doing before is uh, the number one I wasn't tightening this anywhere close to. So I I they give you these wing nuts and it's and it makes it seem like you're supposed to be able to tighten this by your hand, but you certainly can't. It will, there's little teeth inside these holes that grab hold of the line. But you really got to crank this bad boy down. So I just had a pair of vice grips and I just tightened it down. Um, the other key is to make sure that you're providing enough of the material, the tube sticking out of the block, uh, so that the die, as it squeezes down, it hits flush with the block. But it needs to be able to squish the material out through there. And it has to have enough. So on this, this little wrench that it comes with, that's to tighten the these ends on, it actually has a little gauge. So you put the put the tube through the block and then it just needs to be flush with the top of there. Doop, doop, and done. So it works. Um, really hope this is what like fixes the brake leaks. Fingers crossed. So um, we've got two cuts. We got one more cut to make. Uh, and then we will, I will go ahead and get you set up on the, um, and we'll do the, the flanging, so. Yeah, so I tried to see if I could get any extra length out of this front left, front driver's side, um, brake line. Uh, there's no, nothing left to give, so I'm going to have to replace that line, um, 
But the good news is I got the, the passenger side one um, all screwed in there and ready to go. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to flange this next one and see if we can get the rear brakes um, in. I can at least, because this, um, this uh, reservoir actually has a wall in it and it's separated, so if I pour, I can at least check the rears, uh, pour brake fluid in there and see if, uh, after we reflange it, um, see if that did the trick. Um, if not, then um, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do, <laughs> but uh, we'll do something. Um, so right now, let's, re let's reflange this one and then, um, yeah, go on from there, so. tight space in here. Um, another trick I learned, uh, didn't learn, I, through trial and error, if you tighten this one all the way down, the front one, the, the one that's nearest, um, and it works either way if you're doing a big, a bigger pipe back, a bigger line back here, but as you get, um, clamp this one down first, and then this one, because of the mechanical advantage of the lever, actually really grabs a hold of it and tightens it a lot better. So start with the one up here uh, near the front. Uh, I mean, well, near the... Um, near whatever, because you you know, if you're here, use this one. If you're at this one, do this one. Um, it really helps uh, grab a hold. Because uh, I found out that I tightened this one first uh, on the first trial run that I did, and it didn't hold the, it didn't hold it hard, uh, tight enough. So what I was doing is when I pushed the die down, it was just um, pushing the line out the bottom. So, there you go. I'll be an expert at this and probably never have to do it again. I mean, hopefully. Um, the other project, while I'm waiting for the brake line to come in, I just need to make sure I'm getting the right stuff. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to do some research. So maybe um, I'm going to finish this up here, go over to the brake line, and then do some research, remind myself how to take the dashboard off so we can do that. And then the other project we have is to remove the speaker pump because I do pretty soon I need to send that in the west. Um, so, while we won't be finishing the brakes, we're finishing those later, doing some other things. Um, and then I gotta remind me to remind myself to recalibrate the windshield wipers after seeing how they behaved. <laughs> Last time, I don't need to have the one wiping the cowl off, which is what it was doing at the end of last episode. Um, but yeah, so it's the currently since I'm in Washington D.C., we have um, and it's middle of March, 2020, so it's the uh, coronavirus stuff. So uh, the kids are out of school for probably they say two weeks, but it's probably a month. So I'm gonna have lots of little helpers. Uh, my office closed as well, so. Um, 
Well, I don't, you know, I still have to work and stuff, but the office is closed, so I don't have a commute anymore, at least, so that's good. Um, hopefully it'll give me a little bit more time out here. Uh, get cranking and help keep my mind off of things. So, hope everybody who's watching this is staying safe and staying well, healthy. Hopefully you have some ability to go out and work on your own car. Good at this. Um, I could make a right angle to go into the rear. Um, just so you know, I, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but and it doesn't make much of a difference. But on this, on the Alpha, there's um, two outputs for the front, one for each, and then the rear is just one output to the back. So there's one brake line going to the back. It runs along to the um, the, um, on my differential, what am I, I'm totally spacing what that is. But anyway, it runs back to there and then splits off to each of the rear wheels. So it's a pretty cool system for 74. This is pretty amazing. Um, you know, discs, um, yeah, I mean, this thing has a lot of technological wizardry in it. I mean, it's a fuel injected. This one has air conditioning, uh, rear wheel drive, front engine, um, disc brakes, power steering, you know, ba assisted brakes, no power steering. Sorry. No, definitely no power steering. Big steering wheel is what I meant. Um, but yeah, it, this thing is pretty impressive for its time. Um, before, uh, you know, coilovers, uh, the back are like trailing, it's like a, the suspension's like a trailing arm with uh, shocks and struts, um, I mean shocks and springs back. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so let's see if we can I know, I know, I don't have a pipe bender, a line bender. Being gentle. It's really difficult with these hard lines in this tight space to get it to like line up just the way you want so that you know nothing's putting some weird wonky pressure on the threads. See, the danger of cross-threading cross these things is very high, I found. Um, and I really don't want to do that. So, just got to have to kind of massage it, massage the line so that, you know, it's if it's exerting pressure on the, the threads, it's doing it in the right way. At least with these, you can see where it's going. 
The one on the bottom is a gigantic pain anyway. Um, also this, um, this uh, master cylinder, the threads are all gooped up on it as well. So um, when I was originally putting it in, it was ju uh, just a nightmare, just a total nightmare. Um, so, and I know this isn't just to, if you guys haven't seen, I know this isn't the right type of wrench, but the wrench that I have, that is the, you know, the line wrench had a, it's like double sided. It, this needs an 11 and it was one of those ones where it had on one side a 12 and on the other side it had a 10 and there was no 11. So this is my cheapo mini craftsman. It's like kind of 11 millimeters. So anyway, um, yeah, so there's that. I'm going to um, wipe everything off and I'm going to pour uh, some brake fluid into the rear. I know it'll just leak out the front because there's nothing in there but in the, in half of it. Um, but it's a divided uh, reservoir, so it should stay in there. If this is if this is no longer leaking, uh, this one was a really slow leak uh, when I so I either turned it into a very fast leak or I fixed it, um, or it is going to be the same and be a slow leak. So uh, yeah, let me fill that up. Get the brake fluid. All right, funnel. Go on that side. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put a rag down there. So if there is, it's not leaking yet, so that's good. So I'll put this down here and then um, we can come back and check on it to see if it is and make sure that it's not residual from previous. Okay. That on there. Uh, the good thing is I'm going to have to go and re-bleed all of the brakes, um, especially if I have to replace this brake line. So that'll be fun. Uh, at least that'll be another, you know, more video, <laughs> more content, right? Um, okay, so I'm cut it off here. I'm going to go see if I can find some brake line, and then I am going to research taking the dash off, order the brake line, uh, and then hopefully tomorrow I can get back out here, um, and then maybe we'll take the dash off. Um, uh, get a stereo put in. Uh, it's one of the things I can do with the dash off. Uh, connect these hoses, uh, which is the main reason um, to take the dash off. And then just some stuff. I just need to clean some things up. So anyway, great. Well, that was kind of successful, I guess. Um, so till next time. See you. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I'm not done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the dash out. Uh, it's only four bolts. It's pretty easy, supposedly. So, you know how that goes. Um, I've ordered the brake line and the uh, the brake line and the um, flare, the other flaring tool. So, th this is nice. The uh, flare up here at the top here is a bubble flare but at the bottom the line is a double flare so you have to get the other tool it's 3 16th line supposedly and then you have to have both types of flaring tools so it's, I just had to order the other one I'll be here on Monday 
but um, Saturday right now. Be here on Monday, but obviously not in time to do it tomorrow. So onward and upward, um, we have to uh, take the dash out, um, and then I'm going to see how much of a space we have for the new stereo, uh, and then put that in. That's going to probably require a bit of modification to the dashboard. Um, I'll let you. Sh I'll show you just in a second when you um, when we uh, take you off the stand and show you in here like what happened, what's going on with the interior, um, and then we can uh, go ahead and get uh, moving. All right. Okay, so this is the inside of the car. Obviously, um, the dash. So this was um, my father or father-in-law who owned the car originally. Put this old Alpine in. I, I just took the the faceplate off and screws and stuff just to see what we had to deal with here. Um, this taking the dashboard out actually is not that difficult, uh, but as you can see here, this is the air conditioning box. Uh, not a lot of cars. This is a pretty not super common to have the air conditioning box in here. It doesn't work. Um, we already took the air conditioning pump out of there, um, out of the, the compressor pump, out of the, um, up from underneath the hood. So it isn't going to work anyway, but taking it out is a gigantic pain, so just gonna leave it in there. But it is in the way uh, pretty badly when you try to take the dashboard out. Um, there are two bolts down here, one there, and then one underneath there, and then there, I think there are two bolts, I believe they're down in here or behind, huh, they said in the vents. So there are vent there, vent there, vent there, and vent there. So I just need to make sure, I've done this before, taken it out before, I just don't remember where it was. So let me find those, find the right size wrench, and then we can get moving. Okay, now I'm remembering. Okay, so here, the vent, you can see the bolt right there. So that one has to come out. Then there's, you have to take, there's a, um, a vent. This thing goes down in there. It's actually just kind of, you can, I think you're supposed to take this retaining ring out first. And then this thing pops, just pops in and out. And this connects to the, this bottom part connects to the, there's a vent hose that's down in here, right there. Um, so uh, you take those out, take that one out, and then I don't know, let's see if I can see, if I can get you to see in there. Let's see if I can, oh, I'm just blinded myself. Okay. It's kind of hard to, anyway, there's, um, there is a, oh boy, you can't see it. Okay, maybe now. Anyway, there's a, there it is. See that, the bolt? There's a nut right there. You don't have to take that off. Um, there's a little, the little metal piece going to the right. It's actually like a fork and you can just loosen that um, and then um, the this dash that's like kind of a locating the lo way to locate the dash so you take these two out loosen the bolt over there i mean the nut over there loosen the nut over there and then the whole thing pops off so uh, we'll get going i think you can take these vents out without breaking them and that makes it easier to get to that so let me let me take the, this thing out um, and then see if I can get these vents out without destroying them. Um, yeah, and then move forward. Answer is, uh, yeah, you can. It's uh, pretty easy. You just kind of turn them sideways because they, they actually just will flip all the way around, right? And then you just, it's like a, of course, the other one came out really easily. Give it a yank. There you go. Let's see if we can see that. Not better. There it is. That'll be a lot easier to get to. All right. Okay, so this is not as easy as it, so you kind of have to like, what I ended up doing is I just fed, fed a uh, wrench up behind. I had the light down in the vent hole 
And then I just had one of these ratcheting doodads here. These are wrenches. And then put it on there and you can make it go a few clicks at a time. Just have your arm wedged way up underneath. Because remember, you don't have to take it off. It just needs to be loose. You just need to loosen them. These are super easy. This is just 10 millimeter on an extension. Just zip, 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 zip. This one's a little easier to get to. Uh, the big problem, I mean, this one, it's you still have to go up and around. You could probably get a socket in there, but it's, it would just not, be, wouldn't get very many turns on it through the vent. This one, there's just nothing underneath here. And um, underneath here is the fuse box and this mess. And th this is the hose that we put in when we're doing the windshield wipers. This just goes on the back of this. Uh, it's easier to do when you have the, the dash out and then you can kind of wedge it on. You wedge the hose onto the back of this whole thing here. Um, I believe it's easier, if you want to take the dash all the way out, it's easier just to take the instrument cluster that's only held on with a couple of screws just to get this kind of out of the way. Um, and then you can take the dash out. Uh, the instrument cluster obviously has the tachometer and there's a bunch of wires and stuff that are connected to it. Those aren't that big of a deal. The, I remember the speedometer cable is very short, so it is kind of a pain um, just to try to get it off and on uh, while it's in there. Uh, but we will, let me take a look, see if it's easy just to kind of detach this and then just take the dash, you know, maybe take the dash out there. Uh, you can you know, kind of work it up over the steering wheel and take it out. So let's see. All right. Let's see if we can. Very long screws. All right. I think it's the it's a couple of cables that are. I kind of have to do this in stages. Feels like remember correctly. It's the it's the tachometer cable. Yeah. Everything else is relatively easy. Clips. 
couple there. The purple connector goes on this guy. And there's a little black connector there. And if I remember correctly, this. Thinner thing. Um, I don't think it connects. I think you need to take uh, it. The, there's a nut that holds it underneath here to take that off. And then I think there's a couple more plugs and stuff. But for our purposes, if I can just get basically gives this much access, um, and I think we're good. Okay, so I realized that yesterday, number one, couldn't hear anything that I was saying because of the kids in the uh, alley, plus it was through the window, so not great. Um, anyway, just wanted to finish this off. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, the stereo, this old stereo uh, that was in here, this old Alpine stereo, um, was essentially supported by the dash itself. It was just mounted to these these screw these um, posts were threaded through. Um, and I'll show you how it's cut out here. Um, so it was cut, actually cut out. Um, not just the trim, you know, this is just veneer, um, and, but it's like cut out of the actual dashboard stuff behind it. But this was, um, it was just screwed down, like threaded down there on the, those big nuts. And it was just suspended basically from the front of the stereo to like, you know, kind of, so uh, it's not great. Uh, especially if you can feel how heavy this thing is. It's not light. Um, so I don't want a tape deck. Um, so I'm just going to go and get, um, I'm going to have to order one. I didn't, there's nothing that was available um, super fast. Uh, but something that's uh, essentially a multimedia P, uh, stereo that will, um, that's much lighter uh, and, and shallower and won't, if I mount it off of there. But the problem is I am going to have to cut this. So right now what I'm going to do, because I'm at the cut a bigger hole, um, until then, until I get the actual stereo, the thing I can do is just take the dashboard all the way out. So, um, just to show you kind of the, the connections on the back of this. Uh, so there is two big bolt connectors, red one and a white one. Uh, a white one. Uh, there's a couple of individual connectors, a purple one and a black one that go on there. And then there's this, um, the speedometer cable. way. Uh, the speedometer cable here, which just screws on. And the same with uh, the tachometer cable. Same same deal. Has a little threaded thing. Um, probably... This is... These pieces are kind of held in by the binnacle here. Uh, and that's it. So uh, to get the dashboard all the way off, you have to take out the um, rear defroster and the uh, couple plugs here. Uh, this is the um, this is the emergency thing. So um, yeah. So just a few more things. The trip uh, the trip thing that's connected to that you know spins this those numbers, which is this thing on the bottom that needs to come out. Um, you know what? I don't even know what this does, this thing. <laughs> uh, but you have to disconnect that, and then it should be, it should just be able to pop right back out. So that's what I'm going to work on. Okay, so these here come out. Um, there's just a threaded nut that's on the back, and so these slide out the front. And I'm just labeling um, and then putting it here. Um, so. That's what that looks like. And so the blue is on top, yellow is on the side, red's on the bottom. 
there's two black. I think it's just two blacks and a and a, and a white, um, <clears throat> just to, for the circuit. But just in case, wire it back the same way it happened. Same way it was on there. Um, I'm not even sure that the Rudy foggers work. But anyway, better safe than sorry. So you can do that once you label them, take them out. The issue with the, I'll say this, and I remember this being a problem. This here, this one right here, the hazard thing, is the central terminating location of a whole bunch of, basically all the turn signal wires run through here. So this one, if you, um, if you don't wire this correctly, or if more often the plastic, um, it's basically it's like a, if it's pressed in, if it's pressed in, it is off. If it pops out, it's on. And that can actually fail, and then all of your blinkers are on all the time. Which is the original reason this car got parked by my wife um, for 10 years was she said that it was an electrical problem when it turns out it was just this plastic piece in here and this couldn't actually come go stay in so the hazards are blinking all the time funny story uh, but this is an expensive piece um, and I had to take it apart and kind of rebuild it so that it would stay in um, or you can also just take a big piece of duct tape and spread it up there either way okay so once you label the wires and get everything unplugged and take a bunch of pictures, now you can, since these are already loose, these are gone. Uh, there's these two, the hazard, the rear defroster, the trip computer, or the trip, uh, trip odometer thing, the fasten seat belts sign, and uh, that light and then the glove box light lead over here uh, There is on this one. There's this little extraneous extraneous little fuse box From the side. Let's see if I can show it to you. I don't know if this is the Part of the air. I need to trace all the wiring. That's one of my projects. I don't know what this if this is just extra for um, the air conditioning or what that is but Anyway, I'll show you now this is not the easiest thing to get out. Mostly it's just because the steering wheel is in the way. Um, it's not a huge pain, but it's kind of a pain. So the you got to kind of pull it out, tip it down, go this way. So you need to have this door open. Makes things a lot easier. Of course, this would be great if this opened farther than this. Jam something. In. There we go. Uh, so again, everything's loose, nothing, make sure everything's pulled out wire-wise, etc. And then you kind of... Okay. Then you can push it this way. go out that way okay so obviously it looks a lot better now um, you know with the dashboard out of the way um, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm trying to just make sure that I understand where kind of everything goes um, you know, these are the switches for the, um, the throttle light these are the hazards and the hazards and the rear defroster this is a light it says light bulb stuck in it um, that um, shows the throttle light. I disconnected the throttle because it's not really all that useful. Um, and it was just taking, it was making the whole thing run really weird. So I disconnected it for now. Um, this is the tachometer cable, speedometer cable. Uh, this is some of the, that spinny, squirt, swirly thing. This one. Uh, goes to the pink one of those black wire there uh, these are the wires for the fastened seat belt light um, pink and white for each the passenger and driver this is the wire for the light in the um, 
box. These are the speaker wires that I put in. This is the, uh, sorry, speaker wires. This is the antenna. Uh, this mess, so I zip tied some of this up just because it was a big mess the last time I took the dashboard out. Um, so this box, this comes up here, comes into this big thing here, goes back up and into this loom. And then you get to, you can kind of see where the problem lies. It just turns into a gigantic rat's nest of wires all over the place. So I think for my own sanity, I'm gonna take the time and go through and learn, get the wiring diagram out and just learn what each and every one of these guys does before I put the uh, thing back together. I think this is long overdue. It's a big mess. Um, there's wires all over the place. Like for example, these are the, uh, these are the wires right here to the, um, the other, uh, that little tiny fuse box where there's two fuses. So I need to find out what that is. Uh, and then just chase down wires. Um, Cause I'm gonna have to, I'm, I, I took out the taps that were on the old stereo um, and I cleaned those up and repaired them so well that I forgot where they were. Um, and I'm gonna have to re, you know, just a constant ground and then a uh, ignition wire. It's not a big deal, but uh, they're pretty easy to find, but you need to find it. Uh, and then, you know, just kind of clean stuff up, uh, you know, zip tie stuff where it makes sense, label things. So if I ever have to come back in here again, I can do it easily. The dashboard is not really all that difficult to take out. It really does take, once you know what you're doing, it takes about 15 minutes. So it, you know, took me 30. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to leave that off for here for now uh, in this episode, uh, just so you know. I think, you know, it'd be nice. I would have loved to have had somebody who had the uh, dashboard out and show me, you know, what's what. Um, so just taking nice long shots of this so I can, if a worst case scenario, I can just go back and look at what I did. Um, and then I'll have a much more detailed kind of understanding of this and I'll be able to tell everybody. But there's little design touches that I really like. Like all of the grounds for all of these wiring go onto this one bolt here, which is also the thing that holds the, that's where the fork of the dashboard goes in. It's just, you know, and I guess it's elegant in its design. I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to call that. Anyway, so there we are. It's we're really enough. I think uh, this is a pretty good, I think I might use this for my thumbnail because uh, this is pretty much uh, the way this is uh, going so far. So anyway, uh, there it is, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.